Yeah, I got this theory about girls, yo. Yeah, I also got this theory about how they fake the moon landings. Yo, I hear scientists have this theory about how the universe was once contained in something like 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 an atom like billions of years ago and they actually have like detected the like microwaves and stuff from like what happened hi everybody and welcome to things scientists say and everyone else misinterprets with your host mr webb now let's start off with a bang and let's talk about one word in science that is most misunderstood outside of science theory so it's just a hunch right like you know just some kind of idea scientist has no a theory i have two definitions here so uh write very carefully a theory is science's best explanation based on multiple observations by multiple scientists <clears throat> so science's best explanation based on multiple observations so it's not just one it's a lot by multiple scientists okay lots of people it's not just one person it's a lot okay so another way of describing this is general and well-confirmed model this was by mr wright at abington high school a father of a friend of mine and a friend of mine who also teaches physics a theory is not a hunch okay? not a hunch now, perhaps it was at one time when a scientist first thought it up. Even then, a hunch is an understatement. Since it was based at least in some amount of observations, the scientist then made some hypothesis regarding this idea he, probably he, had, uh, and then these hypotheses were tested. Uh, and tested and tested. Uh, or observations were made that supported those observations and then more observations and more observations uh, and not just by one scientist but by many 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 scientists and they all agree well for the most part i mean when you're at the edge of science when you're just beginning to get to really good stuff uh, sometimes there's disagreement but almost all of science is well established in general a lot of science is all agreed upon there's really no dissenting uh People who think Newton was wrong, and if they do, they don't have enough evidence to back them up. What are some examples? Well, uh, from Science News in November of 2013, they came up with their top 10 list. Uh, top 10 would include information theory, game theory, oxygen theory of combustion, plate tectonics at Pangaea, statistical mechanics, special relativity, that was Einstein, general relativity, also Einstein, quantum theory, not Einstein. He didn't like quantum theory. Evolution by natural selection, that Darwin guy, and heliocentrism. Copernicus and Aristarchus of Samos, wait, way back in the day. All of those not only have mountains of evidence behind them uh, by numerous competent scientists, um, they also have technologies based upon them. You've got the internet, you've got economics and psychology, the oxygen theory of combustion, have you ever ridden in a car? Plate tectonics. Okay, volcanoes aren't technology, but we know more about them. A special relativity gives us the atomic bomb e equals mc squared. General relativity gives you the GPS, which allows you to go wherever you want on Google Maps. Quantum theory gives us super fast quantum computers. Evolution by natural selection gives us the flu vaccines and other vaccines and gene therapy and lots more stuff about uh, medicine. Heliocentrism, which is the idea that the sun is the center of the solar system, um, yeah, it's pretty much responsible for all of NASA. So again, theories are general and well-confirmed models. They are science's best explanation based on multiple observations by multiple scientists. Let me backtrack a little bit back to hypothesis. Yeah, we learned about that like every year. It's, a, it's an educated guess. Everybody knows that. No. Hypothesis is not simply an educated guess. I already went over this. Just forget that phrase, educated guess. That is an elementary or middle school definition of it. We have a more nuanced version of that here at the high school. A hypothesis is not simply an educated guess. It is a, I hope you're thinking about it already, testable prediction. 
testable prediction. It must be testable. It must be falsifiable. Uh, if you can't prove it wrong, it's not a hypothesis. You can't do anything with it. So that's it for hypothesis. Law. This can sometimes get tricky. Uh, some people confuse law with theory, and that's kind of understandable as they are indeed very similar. But here's the deal with the scientific law. A scientific law is a rule that nature plays by that we pretty much figured out. Okay? Another way of describing this is that it is a hypothesis that has been tested over and over and over and over again, but it has never been disproven. Okay? You need examples? You've got Newton's laws of motion. You've got the universal law of gravitation. You've got Hubble's law of cosmic expansion. You've got the laws of thermodynamics. All of those are scientific laws. They've never been proven to be untrue. So what is the difference between a theory and a law, huh, Mr. Webb? That's a very good question. Some people will confuse them, and it kind of makes sense because they're both models that accurately and reliably explain how or why the world works. But there are some key differences. Let me highlight those. A theory is typically crafted to explain why we observe what we observe. Why? Let that sink in. Why we observe what we observe. On the other hand, a law, a law is usually discovered, usually in math form, to describe how something works, how it works. Okay? Let me give you some examples here. Okay? The Big Bang Theory. Okay? That usually explains why the universe is expanding, because it started out something really small, what that guy in the beginning started talking about. Uh, however, the Hubble's Law actually describes the rate at which the universe is expanding. It's actually a mathematical formula, and we figured out the rate or how it's expanding. Not why, but how it's expanding. Also, we've got the universal law of gravitation, which is really explaining, you know, how do planets move around in their orbits? We can calculate that. We can actually measure it and predict it for other planets of other solar systems. But quantum theory is really telling us, well, why does mass, and planets have a lot of that, why does mass even have gravity? Can you see the difference here? Travato says it's a scientific fact that the Giants are going to beat the Eagles this Sunday. I'm not even going to touch that one. It's just, it, it's, it's not even wrong. <sighs> All right. Facts. What is a fact? Well, a fact is an objective and verifiable observation, which means it's not subject to interpretation and you can verify it with other people around you. Okay? Pretty simple. In other words, it's information that is assumed to be true because it's been tested. And we know it. It's good. We're, we're done testing it. Like, we're good. We assume this to be true. No, let's go with it. Now, uh, Neil deGrasse Tyson wrote an article. I think I mentioned it in another video. Uh, but he has a couple examples. Like, the earth is round. The sun is hot. Humans and chimps share 98% of the same DNA. And the air we breathe is 78% nitrogen. These are facts. And as Neil says, and I'll call him Neil. I don't know him, but I'll call him Neil anyway. Facts are true whether you believe in them or not. I've already spent a whole lot of time explaining how facts, theories, hypotheses, and laws are all different. And it's key to know that. However, there, there is something that really brings them all together and it has to do with the attitude of science. So the question is, what do hypotheses, theories, laws, and facts all have in common? Bottom line is, they are all subject to change. Now, some are more subject to change than others. Hypotheses are very likely going to change. That's kind of the point of them. You're testing them out. Theories and laws, those have already been tested and tested and observed and observed and tested and tested that they're unlikely to change. Now, they could be tweaked a little bit. That could happen. Uh, but as far as totally changing them and going back to the drawing board, 
Very, very, very unlikely. This is the most annoying way to wear a hat. This is not comfortable. Look at that. Huh?